Welcome to this uh, last reflection before the summer break. Uh, hope you're well. Uh, I was struck, uh, like many of you, I'm sure, uh, with Joth's message last week, uh, encouraging us to stop uh, over the summer break. Uh, wise words, uh, I'm sure. But, you know, knowing something and doing something um, can be very different things. As I was listening to um, the message last week, um, it, it took me back years uh, to when I was learning to drive. So we're going back 40 odd years now. And I don't know why, but for whatever reason, do you know that moment when the instructor slaps on the dashboard and you have to do an emergency stop? Well, I don't know what was going on in my brain, but whenever he did that, I just kept going. And he'd say, no, stop, stop. And then eventually I'd stop. So he, he turned to me and say, that, that, that's not acceptable. Uh, we're going to do that again. And, and I repeated the process for another two or three times. I just failed to stop. I, I knew I needed to stop. I, I, and yet I, I didn't. A tad embarrassing, of course. Um, but more importantly, if I'd done that in the real world, it would have been putting my life and the lives of others uh, in, in danger. Uh, we, we really do need uh, to learn how to stop um, uh, and when to stop and how often we need to stop. Uh, when we lived down in the southwest, uh, we used to travel back to Wales and uh, on the M5 we'd see this, this sign that said, um, tiredness can kill, take a break. And I thought, <laughs> wise words uh, for a motorway, but they're, they're wise words for life. Not, not long after seeing that sign, I was uh, representing another association um, at um, a lunch for re retired ministers. Uh, a lovely time, uh, this golf club, a really, really nice setup. Uh, and I was sat next to this uh, retired pastor in, in his 60s and um, I, I just asked the question as to whether or not he felt that he needed to make any adjustments as uh, he got older. And there was a very abrupt reply, which went, no. And I thought, oh, well, all right then. So I thought, well, in for a penny, in for a pound. So I said, well, so how did that go for you? And then there was a long pause, like an awkward pause. And then he said, um, well, not well, really. He said, one morning I uh, tried to get out of bed and I, and I couldn't. And I couldn't get out of bed for the next three months. And I don't know why, but I just kept crying. And, and I guess as, as we reflect on that, I, I just wonder whether or not there'd been some bangs on a dashboard and he'd failed to, to listen and just kept going. You see, knowing that we need to stop and stopping uh, are two very different things. Um, another thing that came to mind as I uh, listened to, uh, to the reflection last week was again something uh, from years ago. I mean, many, many years ago, probably going back now about 50 odd years ago. And it was a slogan uh, when I was a child. Stop, look, listen. Because I think it's important that we stop, but I think it's also important that we look and listen as well. I, I love this verse from Psalm 27. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Why? To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek in, in his temple. <laughs> if I can have one thing, says the psalmist, just one thing, I just want to gaze on God. I just want to be in his presence. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm sure I've got a lot of questions that I'd want to ask God, but it, would it be that one about how can I be closer to you? I, I just find this so inspiring, but I find it challenging as well. Let me share a, a story with you. Uh, some years back, I was due to go on sabbatical uh, and I'd uh, been preparing. Um, I love to prepare things. I'm a person of lists, so I had loads of lists and I'd organised all kinds of things for this adventure into Asia. Uh, and uh, I remember talking to God about it and, um, and share, sharing with him. And I, I distinctly heard him say to me, Dave, I just love your plans. 
Would you like to hear mine? Those were awkward moments. But, but of course I wanted to hear God's plan. Um, so I got my pencil out and I, I got my list and uh, I said, Lord, I, I'm, I'm listening. What are your plans? And uh, it went something like this. Uh, Dave, I'd like you to sit at my feet. Okay, Lord, I've got that. Sit at your feet. What else, Lord? That's it. That's what I want you to do. I want you to sit at my feet. For how long, Lord? For three months came the answer for the entire sabbatical. Wow. What was I going to tell my deacons? What about the people in Asia who had made all kinds of arrangements for me? And yet the question I had to ask was, was I going to follow my agenda or was I going to follow his? Uh, I came across uh, these uh, uh, words from Henry Newman. He says, we have to fashion our own desert uh, where we can withdraw every day. Shake off our compulsions and dwell in the gentle healing presence of our Lord. Without such a desert, we will lose our own soul while preaching the gospel to others. Ministry and worship can only be fruitful if it grows out of a direct and intimate encounter with the Lord. Wise words. Can I encourage us over this summer period yes to stop but also to gaze to gaze upon the beauty uh, of our Lord I, I appreciate that just like me that there will need to be some readjustments and uh, and changes perhaps in our schedules but I, I think it's a, a great calling uh, for us to stop and to gaze uh, upon uh, our Saviour uh, as I finish uh, I was uh, reminded of a an interview uh, with Mother Teresa. Uh, I think it was an American broadcast. And uh, the presenter says, uh, when you pray to God, what do you say to him? And she said, I, I don't say anything. I, I, I listen. And what does God say to you? He, he doesn't say anything either. He listens. She says, if you don't understand that, I can't explain it to you. Being in the presence of God, I must be honest, my experience on that Welsh hillside all those years ago, I can't tell you that I heard anything specifically from God. And yet I know something transformative happened in my life and in my relationship with him. And in the business of life and the business of the world, that tends to get sucked out, that tends to get moved away. And yet we're encouraged again to stop, to look and to listen. Uh, let me close in prayer. Sovereign Lord, expand my vision of you today. Give me some grasp of your majesty and declare to me your glory. Then draw me to my knees in awe and reverential worship. Amen.